G'day, this is Fletch, your presenter of the TV show Classic Restos. It's the show where it's your chance to see completed restorations being shown, driven and enjoyed. G'day and welcome to the magnificent day two of the Carlisle Ford Nationals and of course not possible without the continued support of my major sponsors. You know the deal. If you're after the best in insurance for your classic car, bike and home and of course the best way to browse, buy and sell online, go to classicrestos.com.au. You'll see the major sponsors logos. Click on those to be diverted directly to their websites. Well, this is day two of the magnificent Ford at Carlisle National event. What an incredible scene, what an incredible turnout. It's hard to put words to. 150 acres of displaying some of the finest of Henry's products. So today we're going to get around and speak to some of the owners of these magnificent vehicles. First cab off the rank here, day two the Ford Nationals at Carlisle. We've got Carl. How you doing, Carl? Just fine, just fine. That's good. What do you think of the event? Oh, it's great. I've been coming since about uh, about 10 or 12 years now. Oh, you're a loyal customer. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. I'm a Ford customer. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, there's no doubt about it. Ford made some absolutely incredible cars. Now, this 1962 Galaxy, what's nice about this, I read the story you've got there, you learnt to drive on this same year car. Yeah, my dad bought a brand new one in 1962. The only difference is this, that one had straight stick, because my dad said, you boys are going to learn how to drive a straight stick, and my sister and my two brothers and me all learned how to drive on it. So what does it mean to you to, to step back in time and have the same car that you learnt to drive on, Carl? That just must feel so nice. Oh, it's fantastic. It really is. I've been, I have been bought this in the 90s. I had one before that, and this one we have is a four-door, which this is a four-door, and I really love it. That's all it is to it. Just fun to drive. Cruise 80 miles an hour, no problem at all. Okay, what's the engine up front, Carl? It's a 292. It's the Y block, they call it. It's the last year they put it in the car, but they kept it in the truck until 1964. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, the old 292 Y block. Boy, didn't they get some runs on the board? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I've read some articles on that. Yes, uh huh. Okay, let's look at the way the car is appointed. Uh, it's got a gorgeous interior. Um, have you done much to the car in the time that you've had this? Uh, well, I've had it repainted. When I bought it, the car inside the trunk and underneath the hood wasn't painted this collar. And I overhauled the engine. My son and I did that and had the transmission redone. And it's got a few modifications. It's got Flowmaster mufflers back here where the original muffler was and a four-barrel carburetor and an aftermarket master cylinder because I didn't like the single master cylinder because I drive it all the time. I wanted to have a little safety there. Yeah. You want to be able to stop fast. Yeah, I want to stop it somehow. <laughs> Absolutely amazing, Carl. Well, look, it, it's just beautiful. I mean, you know, it, it, the trouble with my job, it, it's trying to find new lines and new words to describe cars, and it's very, very hard uh -huh. because they're all beautiful. They're all glorious. The way you've kept this and the way you've preserved it, I mean, the bright work, the stainless steel trim down the side, everywhere you look on this car, it's just, well, it's concourse. Yeah. Well, the, uh, all the chrome and everything is all original. The only thing I had re-chrome was the rear bumper, and I had that done about uh, four or five years ago. Why don't, why don't they build cars like this anymore? Well, I don't know. You can't tell them apart anymore when they come down the road. At least back in these days, you could tell them apart what was well, coming. Absolutely. I never thought the day would come where a car was coming towards me, and I didn't, <laughs> didn't know what it was until I saw the badge. All right. Thanks again, Carl. Well, thank you, Fletch, for doing my car. I really appreciate it. Just wish I could watch it on TV in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, you can watch it here, Carl. You can watch it here in the United States on Tough TV, T U -double F TV. So there you go. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, here we are inside Pavilion Y, and why come in here? <laughs> well, why not? This is where you'll find just some of the classic cars that were endorsed by Carol Shelby.
go. Hey, uh, Building T, GT Joey. Hello, what, pleasure to meet you once again. What a legend. Apparently, I hear this. I hear, that's what I hear. I hear that you're a legend. Now, yeah, why so is I'm that? I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead, but I'll soon. Let's talk about the car a little bit. Let's do that, AJ. Now, tell us what you've got here. I've got a beautiful 1930 Model A it started out as. Through the years, this car has been parlayed into a race car, all the way up to 1938. So from 1930 to 1938, this race is a sprint car and an Indy car. These are the last of the years that you were able to run a four-cylinder, a single-seater, mechanical brakes, hand on the outside before squirt brakes. This is a kind of a, an early SoCal. Correct. Correct. I've noticed the, the chassis rails, Model A. Everything's Model A, three-speed. And then later Ford produced a Model B engine, which this became, more horsepower with an aluminum head. That's amazing, Joe. Tell us, how does the four-cylinder engine perform? It's just about a 200 horsepower, but at 1,600 pounds, the car flies. And back then, the wheels were too small, so you used to use truck tires, which you'll get a picture later. Absolutely amazing. Now, tell us, uh, you're here at Carlisle. Obviously, this event means a lot to you. Yeah, uh, this is Ford Carlisle. And the uh, Miller family has done a great job once again, putting on another great event. And there's a lot of Mustangs, but there's still some guys with some of the old stuff when uh, Lance's dad started this a long, long time ago. And I remember his dad. So. Some, of the, some of the galaxies are superb that have turned up this weekend as well. Galaxies, big bodied cars, lightweight cars. Uh, Lee Holman's here from Holman Moody. And um, a lot of history. A lot, a lot of history. So tell us, Joe, where are you from? For those that, and myself that we don't know, where are you from, Joe? Well, as you can tell from my accent, it's not from Australia, but it's from the Bronx, New York. Wow. And now I reside out in Long Island. What a tough city, the Bronx. Goodness me, you know, um, here's me thinking probably, yeah, Chicago's up there. Chicago's a tough city. You guys wouldn't be too far behind that, I wouldn't imagine. A lot of successful people come out of the Bronx because your first thing is get out of the Bronx. So whatever you have to do. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it's, uh, the Bronx is the, the sort of place where you'll go further with a nice word and a gun than what you will with just a nice word. Yeah, that was the old days. Now you need a machine gun. It used to be a regular gun. Now you need a machine gun. <laughs> Joe, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Classic Restos. 13 TV networks in four countries. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you, Fliss, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're watching the Ford Nationals at Carlisle, Pennsylvania, United States of America. And you're seeing it on Classic Restos. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Fords right after this. How good is this? We're in Pavilion A and we found Joe. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, Joe, you've got a 1971 Ranchero. Yes, sir, I do. I don't believe I've seen many like this this weekend. That's true. It's a very unique car. It's a Squire and it comes with the largest engine you could buy from Ford. Yeah, a 429. Cobra Jet. In a, in a ute. Well, in Australia, we call them a ute. So over here, a pickup. That's what we call them. We call them pickups here, too. So tell me, Joe, when you first saw the pickup, were you inspired by the timber down the side, the wood grain? Yeah, that was unique. Um, the color combination's unique to it as well, and then the motor just made it all that much better. Yeah, I bet it goes all right. It does. It doesn't pass a petrol station, as you would call it. <laughs> hey, you don't worry about gas. You've got 429 cubes, got some big boys up under the hood. Hey, that's what it's all about, eh? Aussie track rear to it, air conditioning so you can stay cool, and I guess your Australian weather's hot, right? Absolutely, just as hot as here. And you can bring home the beer in the back. See, he's got it worked out. Hey, hey, Joe's got it together. Now, watching the show in Australia, our XA and XB Falcons. Now, uh, this might not mean much to Joe, but our Ford Falcons in Australia, incredible when you look at the origin, where the styling comes from. Now, you can see Fairlane in here. You can, you can see our Falcon in Australia. A lot of our models based from the early designs here. And you look along the top of the doors, the top of the guards, or the fenders as you call them here. Yeah, we've got the same, similar cars down under in Australia. I just thought you might like to know that. Yeah, I've seen that too. And actually, the Torino was a version of the Fairlane in 69 as a package, which it be became the main name of the car in 70 and 71 here in the States. Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen the uh, the pressing in the back 
about not drilling holes because the gas tank's right underneath. I mean, that makes perfect sense. That's the first time I've seen that. Yeah, I think Ford wanted to keep it simple instead of making somebody have a mistake and find the petrol the wrong way. OK, we'll look at the interior. We've got the high back bucket seats again uh, uh, the same year in Australia with our, um, our XA and XB Falcons, we, the same style of seating. Uh, the steering wheel in the centre as well, the, the centre horn uh, pad as well, very similar to the, the, the wheel in Australia. It's, it's, it's quite ironic that, um, that there's so many similarities. Uh, however, we uh, couldn't get the 429 like you guys could, no. So Joe, jo, tell me, how long have you had the car? Uh, I've had it for a short period, just about six months. I haven't even had a chance to enjoy it. I'm so busy these days. Yeah, right. Mate, it's good to catch up here. And thanks for coming to the, the Ford Nationals here at Carlisle because, uh, man, you, you, you couldn't have picked uh, a more unique event. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's nice to meet you, Fletch. Still in building A. Can't get out of building A. We've got Bill. Bill, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Look at this. This is gorgeous. 59 Skyliner. Bill, tell us the story. I believe Little Bird told me that you restore these. Yes, I do. The car has only made 12,000 of them. They made it three years. A 57, a 58, and a 59 Ford. Hard top convertibles. And they're rare automobiles, and there are very few uh, left in existence today. The, the, what an extraordinary car for its era. Ah, it was engineered 30 years before its time. The, the way that the convertible roof comes up over the top, that is just a work of art. That is geometry that was sourced on the drawing board years ago, I think way ahead of its time. I agree with you 100%. The men who built these cars were way ahead of their time. Yeah. The ideas came from their minds didn't come from computers these are the guys had the thoughts in mind and they they put pen they put the yeah they put the pencil to the paper and whammo that's right and there's a lot of engineering factors to these cars and well in engineered that they lasted over 50 years wasn't it nice too that it was back in an era where they were actually proud to boast that a car had air conditioning to the point where they would do a beautifully brushed polished plaque to go on top of the door letting you know that this car had air conditioning that's right a very rare tag was put on the car only on the cars that had the air and you had to order them specially just weren't produced yeah. and it's an excellent feature for an automobile Back in the days when features like that were not taken for granted. Oh, they were rare, and you had to pay extra for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so tell us uh, the engine size. This one here has a 1959 Ford 332, which is a two-barrel carburetor motor, automatic transmission, and it's excellent on gas because of the two-barrel. Yeah. And then they had a four-barrel, uh, which is the next size up, was a 352. Yeah, sure. So this is a little bit on the economy side. Yeah, yeah but still has plenty of power to do the job you want it to do. It still oozes shiny stuff. I mean, aesthetically, the way it's sculpted and shaped, it's just the curves in this thing. Amazing. Oh, yes. And it's worth a lot of money today. OK, Bill, just quickly now, the interior. Uh, an original interior, but obviously been restored, but back to factory spec? Exactly. Everything has to be totally correct on a car. Every screw, nut and bolt, and the interior is the same design when it was manufactured. There's no excuse these days to have a, an old worn out part on a Mustang because you can get every conceivable part for a Mustang. How do you go with these Skyliners? Not easily. We had to do a lot of homework, some things we have to remanufacture ourselves. Yeah. And the, but there's a lot of good parts out there to find as well. Good on you, Bill. Thanks for coming to Carlisle because it's people like you that make the Nationals and, uh, mate, bringing stuff like this in. Whew. Would you like well, to see it operate? Uh, yeah, would I like to see it operate? What do you reckon? Would we like to see it operate? Of course we would, Bill. I'll well, see if we can do it.
magnificent Ford Nationals at Carlisle, Pennsylvania, United States of America, and you're seeing it first on Classic Restos. We'll be back with more Classic Fords after this. I'm Mike with Carlisle Events, and you're watching Classic Restos with Fletch. How good an opportunity is this? We have Jim Owens from Ford and Shelby. Jim, pleasure to speak with you. Fletch, it's great speaking with you as well. We're so glad you're here with us in Carlisle, joining the Ford and the Shelby crew. I think what you're going to see here during this week is about as much fun as you can have at a car show. Well, it certainly opened my eyes, the significance of Carroll Shelby. I mean, of course, uh, in Australia and, and in New Zealand, all well, around the world, he's known as an iconic guy. Carroll would love an event like this. And the reason why is he'd love these enthusiasts. The people here who come to Carlisle every year are true dyed-in-the-wool enthusiasts for the Ford brand and you know some of these people even have it tattooed on their body you know have the Ford Oval and Carol would truly appreciate that Carol is about the passion and the energy he is a pull up your bootstraps American success story even above the racing aspect he did the chili company he did the philanthropy he went on a 12-year walkabout and and he has run more businesses into the ground than he made successful and and he would tell you that he had more fun in some of the unsuccessful ones that he did in the successful ones. Uh, well, there's always plenty of action happening here at Carlisle. Uh, the Ford Nationals for 2012. What's coming up next, Jim? This is about the most fun that you can have with your clothes on, Fletch. <laughs> if you see behind you in here, the stands are absolutely packed and they're here for the burnout contest. Now, if you ever watched hockey, yeah. where you see the plexiglass up along the boards. They take jersey barriers, which are the cement barriers, they put up plexiglass in a little box, and all sorts of cars and trucks come in here into this burnout box and burn the tires until they explode. It is so much fun. You can't wait to see it next. All right, well, strap yourself into your favorite chair and check out just a sample of uh, a lot of the action that happens here at Carlisle. Thanks again, buddy. Let's thanks so much and enjoy your stay.
Well, it's not every day of the week that they choose to close the streets of downtown Carlisle, and there's a reason for it. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you. It's because of over 400 Fords wanting to proceed through the area. So, welcome to the Carlisle Street Parade party. Oh. Thanks for watching Classic Restos. If you want to see your car on the show, go to classicrestos.com.au. In the meantime, drive safe, resto your ride, and get it on the show.